So, how can we implement this system in general practice? So, diagnosis is very important uh, for the patient, but it is it is also important in the medical legal context in many countries. Uh, of course, in ours as well. So, the diagnosis should include a comment on the risk factor profile of the patient in terms of smoking and diabetic status. Other putative uh, risk factors such as diet, genetics, obesity or stress should also be noted in the history of the patient. So what's in a good diagnosis? The most constructive feature of the new system, this new classification, is that it reassures clinicians to Consider periodontal diagnosis in more detail, what we have discussed in two lectures right now, this is the second one, and to take more radiographs for the uh, examination or for checking or for diagnosing the bone loss and all the destruction going on inside which we cannot uh, see with our unaided eye. So. Now we come to the step-by-step -step, uh, examination of the patient, how we are going to examine a patient and how we will uh, diagnose a patient with a periodontal problem and what will be our definitive diagnosis and what will be our treatment plan. First of all, we will take a history, extraoral examination, intraoral examination. If there is a evidence of periodontitis, so we will check the interdental recession, of course. So if there is a, a healthy patient, so we will go for a basic periodontal examination and we will check for the code, if there is code 3 or 4 of the basic uh, periodontal examination and it says no, then we will go check for the uh, less than 10% bone loss, bleeding in on probing is there or a little bit or no, no problem. Okay. So if this is yes, then we will, go, we will say that the patient has periodontal health and we will go for the risk assessment of the risk factors and then we will go for the definitive diagnosis and we will make a treatment plan. Okay, fine. If after taking the history, extra oral examination, intra oral examination, uh, evidence of periodontitis is there, uh, basic uh, periodontal examination and the code 3 or 4 uh, is there. If it is there, yes. If we say yes, then we check the greater, uh, third, more than 30% of bone loss, bleeding on probing. If this is no, then we will check that this, uh, we will consider this as localized gingivitis again we will check the risk uh, risk factors or risk assessment then we will go for the definitive diagnosis treatment planning so this is uh, for the this condition and again if we go for history we will take an, uh, if there is another patient I, we can consider it like that if the history is total examination and short examination shows some evidence of periodontitis and there is incidental recession, yes. Then we will check with the, that this is a, if a, there is 30% more than 30% of bone loss and there is breathing on probing. And if we say it is yes, then we will go for generalized gingivitis. We will consider it as generalized gingivitis. Again, we will go for the risk assessment. And then we will go for the definitive diagnosis and treatment plan. Fine. Now, if uh, we take a history, we do the extraoral examination, intraoral examination, and there is evidence of periodontitis, and there is a basic, uh, basic uh, periodontal examination. And the basic periodontal examination shows code 3 or 4 and yes. Then we will assess the patient appropriately and we will take some radiographs as well. Okay. And then 
we will check with the basic uh, dog examination and uh, if uh, there is uh, just need of initial periodontal treatment we will give initial periodontal treatment and we will check uh, this with the uh, if there is a uh, basic uh, the basic periodontal examination says uh, yes for the code 4 uh, then we will go for full periodontal assessment including the detailed pocketing chart so now we have to uh, I will repeat this again if the basic periodontal examination shows code 4 and there is a yes for this then we will go for full periodontal assessment including the detailed pocketing chart okay again we will go back again we will check uh, if the evidence of periodontitis is there interdental recession is there yes go and take some assessment and appropriate radiographs and again we will go for a full periodontal assessment including the periodontal pocketing chart once we will go for the full periodontal assessment including the detailed pocketing chart we will check what is going on now if there is molar incisor pattern and it is yes we will consider this as periodontitis involving the molar incisor pattern showing the molar incisor pattern and then we will go for the staging rating risk factor assessment current disease status whether the disease is currently stable it's in remission or currently unstable then we will go for the definitive diagnosis for this after this examination and then we will plan our treatment again going back after doing the periodontal assessment including the detailed pocketing chart if the MIP is no molar incisor pattern is not over there then we will check if there is less than 30 percent teeth involved if there is yes then we will consider is as a localized periodontitis and again we will go for the staging grading risk factor assessment current disease status whether the currently disease is stable or it's in remission or it's in it's unstable again we will go for the definitive diagnosis for this condition and we will plan the treatment and if again full after full periodontal assessment including detailed pocketing chart if the there is more than 30 percent teeth loss involvement then we or you can say that there is no less than 30 percent there are greater than 30 percent teeth involved then we will consider it as generalized periodontitis again we will go for staging grading risk factor assessment current disease status whether it is stable in remission or unstable then we will go for the definitive diagnosis and plan the whole treatment periodontal treatment so if we just take an example from the paper of the 2017 classification they have just given an example what will be our uh, diagnostic diagnostic statement for some uh, patient just an example the, the final is, uh, diagnosis would enclose of these components in a diagnostic statement for example diagnosis is equal to if there, there is more than 30 percent teeth involved generalized periodontitis and if the stage uh, if the, there is very severe periodontal problem very pocketing depth is too much bone loss is too much okay so that, 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 that will be that will be called stage four and if there is some uh, for the grading b it's moderate and if the disease is 
unstable as we have discussed earlier so the diagnosis will fall will be termed or the statement will be like that generalized periodontitis stage 4 grade B currently unstable and finally as a note we have to uh, document the relevant risk factors below the diagnostic statement whether it's smoking or diabetes or genetic whatever we have discussed all these uh, in previous slides so the, the final diagnostic statement becomes for example for a patient generalized periodontitis stage 4 grade B currently unstable suboptimally controlled diabetes so this is uh, for the examination and grading and complete definitive diagnosis and treatment plan for a patient how we are going to implement this classification on the examination of the patient and diagnosis of the patient okay but keep one thing in mind this is very important that if uh, when we are going to treat a patient at, in a periodontal problem the treatment procedures are the same we are doing there is no change in the treatment procedures we are just classifying the periodontal problems in this classification this classification is not giving you any direction of a new type of treatment the treatment is the same okay but just we are going to classify or grading the problem how severe how complex the how much the extent of the disease okay so what are the risk factors to so make a is make a systematic uh, uh, history or diagnostic chart okay so this is uh, this is for just for monitoring of the patient uh, when the patient is coming to you or uh, we will be coming in the future as well to use in the your dental clinics so this is just giving you an idea how to uh, examine a patient uh, how to classify the problem or periodontal problem of that patient and how to monitor in the coming years so that you have a good uh, data regarding the patients previous problems current problems and coming problems you can monitor the disease in a good way so this classification gives you only these uh, points or steps not the treatment treatment will remain the same whatever we are going to treat the patient as a periodontist as a general dental practitioner the treatment procedures will remain the same now we conclude with this uh, periodontal problems and now we come to the uh, classification which was included in this 207 uh, classification that a new classification was introduced for the periimplant diseases and conditions so periimplant diseases and conditions there are four periimplant uh, conditions or diseases number one is called periimplant health in which a patient has been given an implant uh, and the patient is feeling good there is no problem in the periodontium the surrounding structures and also with the implant there is no problem that is called the periimplant health number two is the periimplant mucositis this is a if the patient is having some problem okay we will discuss this later other slides the third one is periimplantitis number four is the periimplant soft and hard tissue deficiencies so what is periimplant health periimplant health has defined both clinically and histologically clinically periimplant health is characterized by an absence of visual signs of inflammation so you cannot see the inflammation with your unaided eye and there is no bleeding on probing the periimplant health can exist around implants with normal reduced bone support it is not possible to define a range of probing depths compatible with periimplant health 
so we cannot uh, exactly show the probing depths in the plant because we cannot insert the probe inside the plant. But we can see if there is already some pockets open or a space there uh, in the peri uh, peri plant region. So we can consider it uh, as a disease for health. Okay. So if there is no signs of uh, visual signs of inflammation, there is no bleeding on probing, this will be called periplant uh, peri health. This is uh, how an image uh, showing the plant health, pink uh, gums, and there is no as such redness in the surrounding structures. So the second one is peri-implant mucositis. This is the disease condition. So how we diagnose uh, there is muco uh, mucositis? The peri-implant mucositis is characterized by bleeding on probing and there are visual signs of inflammation. There is a strong evidence that it is caused by plaque. So we have to check the oral hygiene status of the patient. And this can be reversed with measures taken to eliminate the plaque. Of course, as I told you that we have to check the hygiene and if we uh, give uh, hygiene instructions and uh, the, the patient takes the counseling and uh, cleans uh, the, the oral cavity properly and maintains his oral hygiene, then this can be, this condition can be reversed. These are the, some images for the peri implant mucositis both as, a, as an image and the radiographs. The third condition is peri-implantitis. Uh, peri-implantitis uh, in this uh, classification was defined as a plaque associated pathologic condition. So there are two things involved, plaque and pathology occurring in the tissue around dental implants characterized by inflammation in the peri-implant mucosa and subsequent progress loss of supporting bone. So what is going on in peri-implantitis? This is plaque associated with pathologic condition. There is inflammation in the surrounding structures and there is some loss of spurting bone. So perimplantitis is associated with poor plaque control and with patients with a history of severe periodontitis. So this is very important to check or examine the history. We have to ask questions with the patient that what is the condition of the patient regarding the periodontitis. If the patient is having a history of severe periodontitis, then again, they can suffer from peri-implantitis. This is the wedge and some radiographic uh, explanation of this condition. So, these are all uh, the things we wanted to discuss regarding the periodontal classification of 207. And, uh, after discussing all these things, but I tried to make uh, this these lectures a little bit simple, but I don't know how much I succeeded that. But uh, I would like to say that that if we will uh, consider the patient and monitor the patient properly according to this classification, this is very helpful and very uh, comprehensive. Uh, classification uh, given after a decade uh, to all the general dental practitioners and periodontists and implantologists especially so this covers all the uh, periodontal uh, factors and uh, with, the, uh, with the disease and uh, all the oral condition hygiene whatever so if this uh, as we discussed in the first lecture that this is giving you the periodontal health, what is health, what is disease and 
uh, what are the conditions uh, associated with the uh, uh, implants dental implants and how we are going to classify a patient examine a patient and how we are going to diagnose and uh, how we are going to plan the treatment but again note that the treatment will remain the same whatever we are doing right now in our clinics it's the same the treatment will remain the same the periodontal treatment will be remaining will be remaining the same okay for the time being right now bye bye